Growing a garden can be such fun, but pests and weak veggie plants can be disheartening. This month, we are going over some of the natural techniques that I've been using for years, and they've been quite successful. I'll also maybe give you some of the unsuccessful ones. Um, I hope that you send in some email questions or comments of your concerns about gardening uh, organically. I will address the most common ones, and I don't profess to be an expert, but I have been gardening organically for over 20 years. Hi, I'm Mary Bourne, traditional naturopath, and I love sharing natural remedies with people for better health. Natural remedies have been around for hundreds, even thousands of years because they work. So thank you for joining me today, and I hope that you like this video and give me a thumbs up and um, subscribe and share with other people because during these tough times, it really is delightful to grow something, to eat something that you've been growing and watch it uh, reproduce, basically, uh, go from flower to uh, veggie state. It's just really quite the joy. There are some things that take the joy out of gardening, and those are the things we're going to talk about today to make it easier and more fun. So I'm so grateful for YouTube and Google so that I can uh, share some of the things with you that I've learned through the years. And uh, maybe um, there are more tips out there, but hopefully watching these videos will save you some time and make it easier for you to uh, enjoy gardening. So you'll notice in this uh, clip here, uh, how dark and rich the soil is. And this is the way I used to garden. I loved um, gardening this way, but I'm in my mid seventies and bending over and hoeing and trying to weed was no longer an option for me. This type of gardening was just too hard for me. Try to, um, kneel down or get around any of these veggies was not an easy thing. I want to point out though that one of the first things that I learned was to plant marigolds in a garden because they are a great pest control. A lot of pests do not like the smell of marigolds. So this is my garden. This is a raised bed that we purchased uh, online, but I have seen plastic ones. I've seen other varieties of this type of raised bed. And you, believe it or not, can fit a lot of veggies in, in that. Um, you, this was earlier in the spring. You'll notice that we put plastic uh, tubing around the legs, and that's because we have our lawn cut professionally, and they're not that gentle with the weed whip. So these uh, plastic legs will protect the wood legs from getting all um, banged up from the weed whips. But you can see that this garden is uh, early. I um, I'll show you a picture in a little bit of how it looks now. And we also ended up, I don't know if you can see the bracing, trying to find my cursor, there it is. Um, right here, we, we took a, two, a one by six and spread it along or uh, screwed it in to the wood because this whole piece was coming apart. The whole thing was just, pulling apart and actually one of the other, the, there's two of these and the other one, this had been resting on here. It had split apart. So, uh, so it really is a kind of a flawed uh, design. I loved the wood in it. Whoops, let's go back to that. I love the wood in it, but um, apparently our sprinklers wet here and not up over and it got this so wet that it expanded and the screws weren't long enough to really hold on. 
So we have had to make some adjustments to this, but this is a wonderful, wonderful way for older people to be able to stand and garden. I can pick weeds, I don't have to bend over. It uh, also, uh, anybody who is uh, compromised, uh, you know, just sitting, you can roll up to the garden and, and sit and garden. Um, picking might be a, a little more of a challenge because uh, obviously the tomatoes are going to go up a little higher, but I have some options for that as well. So here is the hoop garden that we installed uh, later on. And now you can see what we did. We put in these, I say we, but my husband is the, the Put her, the one who went the carpenter, so to speak. And we put in these braces so that the tomatoes and beans uh, have a place to, to run up, so to speak. And it's a <clears throat> really, really wonderful um, way to garden where you're not having to deal with a lot of weeds in that. Uh, also, you notice that my hand is on the hoop, and uh, we got this cattle panel. It's 16 feet long, so it was quite a challenge. It's like, how are we going to get this thing home? And finally, uh, we looked on YouTube, and how did other people accomplish getting it home? Uh, some of them bent it, but you, you can see how uh, thick that wire is. It's really not... Um, very thin or bendable. So then our son Brian came up with the idea of putting it on the boat trailer. So we, that's how we got it home. And then we bent it into this arch to create a raised bed gardening. And you can see it was kind of windy that day and I wasn't expecting my husband to take that picture, but he decided that he wanted to uh, take the picture. You'll also notice that we had some problems with our cherry tree. The uh, limb fell off of it. This old cherry tree was here when we moved here. So it is over 50 years old. And we have a new branch coming off of it that is doing very well, but the old part of it itself has died. And um, uh, we had a wonderful friend come over and help clean that up for us. But I thought you'd enjoy seeing the raised bed garden. Now these are grow pots and I just absolutely love them. They These grow bags can that you can get them in five pound, seven pound, up to 20 pound uh, bags. And they really hold a lot. Uh, I've, I'm so enjoying them and they are now around our hoop. So now I wanna talk about how to create some composting. We, even though we have quite a large area, we do not have a compost pile. I have had trouble in the past trying to keep that pile warm enough, heated enough that it creates a good compost. So I've had to come across some other ideas on how to create um, healthy compost. And one of the ways you can do it is by saving veggie scraps and eggshells and coffee grounds. You don't want it to be overwhelming in coffee grounds, but uh, some coffee grounds is really great. Maybe uh, every third day add coffee grounds to the mixture. But uh, when my big jar gets halfway full, I put it into a blender. I use my bullet blender and it's dedicated just for this. I, but you can use any blender and clean it up really good. But basically uh, some of the doesn't smell too good because you're using a somewhat damaged veggies or things that are on their way out and uh, you're gonna blend it up and make a slurry out of it. Now I used to just take 
the eggshells and plunk it into the garden and that worked okay but it took a long time for them to break down using this process and creating a little furrow uh, in the dirt and just spreading this slurry mix in there and then covering it up because you don't want animals to know it's there but the worms will uptake it and uh, spread it throughout uh, this type of gardening uh, works on what's called the microbiome when we used to garden i hold a lot and when you do that you disturb these filaments that reach out and uh, feed the soil the they they take nutrients from the soil and go uptake into the plant they're very much like the the small arteries uh, that exchange uh, between the veins and the arteries and then the exchange occurs so in other words they're taking oxygen up into the plant and nutrients up into the plant and the microbiome can be considered the gut of the plants and just as we need probiotics and prebiotics plants do also to feed their microbiome and i found that compost tea aerated compost tea is one of the best ways to get this oxygenated fermentation uh, wonderful fertilizer into the plants now uh, what I do uh, there's plenty of videos on YouTube about making this but mine is very simple you bring water up to where the ring starts on the five gallon bin uh, and you add non chlorinated water to it and uh, I take a knee-high stocking and this one is black and it's really actually preferred to use a non-colored stocking so uh, you can see here this is the stocking so if you use a non-colored stocking <laughs> it makes it a, a little um, you're not adding any chemicals to the water and that's we don't want chlorinated water if you only have chlorinated water it's suggested that you stir it vigorously let it sit two to three hours and let the chlorine uh, chlorine dissipate because chlorine can kill plants and when you are when you do this there is a small investment because you're going to get worm castings and they come in a bag bordines usually cover you can order it online uh, if you know somebody who is doing um, worm farming they will end up with some worm castings that are basically just poop <laughs> from the worms but it is extremely nutritious and uh, you take it and you put in two cups into the stocking and then you kind of twist it around and hang it around the handle of the bucket you want to make sure that it's uh, above the bottom of the bucket by about two inches and then you add in uh, like two tablespoons of molasses because you can use one tablespoon. I tend to use two, but uh, the recipe calls for one. And you wanna stir that in really good. I have a, a big plastic spoon that I use to um, turn it around, or whisk it around in the water and um just by doing that there will be some color coming out but the rich color comes after about 24 to 48 hours also on the bottom are two of the aerating stones so these you can get from any pet supply store that uh ha that provides supplies for fish tanks and it's uh, so you do have to have some sort of electricity where this is i have it in my shed and it runs 24 7 and you do not want to stop the 
aeration because uh, it, that solution would have to be used within two to three hours of stopping it because the aeration helps to keep it from fermenting uh, in a smelly form. It is fermenting, but it is not smelly at all. I was so shocked the first time I did it. Now, if you add some kelp or algae to it, that tends to create a smell, but it does enrich the solution. From the solution, you can take a couple of cups of it, pass it through a fine strainer, and um, you can spray the veggies. You're gonna add to every cup a gallon of water. So that's the solution is one cup and the water is a gallon. And then you're go you can spray any vegetation with that, the, like the leaves of tomatoes, you can spray the tomatoes themselves and you can use it that very day. You wash it off and that's, it's, it's fine to use. There's no harm in that. Uh, so these are two options so far that you can do with minimal investment. <laughs> the scraps, there's zero investment. You're just throwing stuff into a, a garden and um, making it more nutritious from throwaway stuff. So uh, the, <clears throat> the next thing you can do is Epsom salt. <clears throat> now I put on Facebook a, a little video on why Epsom salt is important because a lot of us who have gardened know the benefits of Epsom salts. They're wonderful. It helps the uh, root system take up and make the plant more photosynthesized. Uh, so you can get, it can take from the sun and create this green lush uh, chlorophyll plant. If you're plant is starting to turn yellow. In other words, you can look at the vein of the plant and that seems yellow, then your soil is magnesium deficient. So just sprinkle a tablespoon of the Epsom salts around the plant, kind of rub, dig it in a little bit, uh, or with your gloved fingertips, just kind of work it around. It can also be put in uh, water. So you use one tablespoon to one gallon of water and spray it on the tomatoes, uh, peppers, anything that, uh, any veggie that you want. Uh, it will help to that plant to uptake food better. And it's weird because uh, we think of it having to come from the soil. But we do want to keep that soil healthy and there's three ways that you can do it through food scraps, through the, the uh, compost tea and through Epsom salts. And after you're working hard in the garden, what you might want to do is a little foot soak. So I put a recipe there. You use two gallons of warm water. It's not really, really hot. It's just like uh, tepid bath water and two tablespoons to a half a cup of Epsom salts. And you can add five to six drops of lavender or your favorite essential oil. I also like a, a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon of uh, powdered ginger in that. And that really invigorates. If you want an invigorating one, I also use peppermint oil. But this recipe is one that I've used for people with uh, challenges with the nerves in their feet. Now I can't create diagnosis nor prescribe, but understand that I'm talking about people who have blood sugar imbalances that are affecting the, the nerves in their feet. And if the foot is numb, you want to use your wrist or test that water before you stick your feet in it. The problem with uh, a lot of people is that they don't have a very good sense of feel and we don't want you to burn your feet at all. So make sure that you're using uh, tepid water and uh, 
creating a, a good experience and healing experience. Those that have tried this from my suggestions in the past have able, been able to regain some of the feeling in their feet uh, within a few weeks. So doing this on a daily basis with the ginger added in there, one teaspoon of ginger to one um, half cup of the Epsom salts and two gallons of water. So uh, it goes above the ankles. You can kind of see it here on the screen where it's around her ankles. So you need to have a deep enough dish. And sometimes uh, it, the old fashioned dish pan will suffice in a rectangular one or you can use a fancy bowl like this one and just as long as your feet can fit in it comfortably i don't know about a size 12 foot but <laughs> you might be having a little difficulty finding a, a, a way to do that so the recipe on this one i'm sure that uh, so it was easy enough. It's a five gallon bucket filled with non chlorinated water to within two to three inches. You need a knee high stocking in which to put. And by the way, those stockings can be uh, you take the used up compost or, or worm casting, dump it out, use that in your garden. That can be another way to enrich the soil. Uh, just because you've used the tea, it's not used up. Tea bags, also you can uh, rip open the tea bag and put tea leaves. That seems to work really well in supporting the health of the soil. And then that was one, two tablespoons of unsulfured molasses. And you stir it well and then the aerator and let it go for at least 24 hours. I found it best to go 48. There are some that even go longer. And as long as you keep it bubbling, it can last for uh, a good week or week and a half. Um, it's getting stronger as you do it. So if you want to just take out the stocking and keep the bubbler going, then uh, the whole apparatus, the stocking, the the uh, bubbler uh, and the bucket all need to be washed with some baking soda and water and a little bit of soap and clean it up really good before you start your next batch so that you're not carrying through anything else. So that's how my garden looks now. You can see how the veggies in the, the uh, grow pots are doing so well. I have bunches of these spaghetti squash growing on this plant. I have broccoli. I did a video showing how to sprinkle the diatomaceous earth on your leaves if you're seeing any holes that are coming through. Now the challenge with these pots is that they have to be kept moist. So you do not want them to dry out um, for any length of time. Uh, and I have been able to achieve that very nicely in this 90 degree weather. We, uh, we have sprinkler systems running along here and they have been wetting the plants sufficiently enough that they are doing really well. I have more pots along here then they will grow up and across and this will grow up and meet the others and I'll take a picture of that in August when our uh, veggies are doing much better but you can see how the bracings have been being are being used right now we have beans that were supposed to be bush beans and ended up being pole beans in here and they're um climbing vigorously up along those uh, one buys. And uh, it's been such a joy this year because the weeding is minimal. And when your weeding is minimal and your veggies are growing, it's really, really exciting. So I hope that, um, that you've enjoyed today's uh, video that you tell others ab about table scraps and eggshells and, and 
um, peelings and all those great things that you normally throw away and to save them. And then uh, every twice a week, the, you don't want to keep them for a long period of time, but I found two to three days is fine. Then you add water, blend it up and make this uh, slurry and just dig a little trench, put it in and uh, it's done. And within a week, that's all dissipated. So you can do that same area every week if you want to. Um, so uh, there are lots of wonderful videos if you want to extend your knowledge about the grow pots or the compost tea. And um, don't forget to like and share uh, these videos, uh, subscribe if you will. And uh, if you have uh, any comments, please add them. I will be looking on a, a daily basis. And if you want to email me, my email address is drmary at bornforhealth.com. And I encourage you to do more gardening and enjoy it as I have uh, through my 70s. Uh, the people that live longer and healthier always have a garden. So if you just have a deck, you can you do the grow pots. I hope I've given you some great suggestions on how to make healthier plants, especially when you are doing them with uh, organic gardening and you're paying attention to the soil. And hopefully you'll pay attention to your own microbiome and keep yourself healthy. Thanks, bye for now.